And 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 also, I think you touched on this idea of uh, shoshin or beginner's mind. Um, you mm-hmm. know, when you're looking at innovation and reframing problems um and maybe you could talk a little bit about that because i think that's a a really interesting concept yeah it's 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 it is an important concept and you know maybe to 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 touch upon that and also to wrap on the previous point around experts because it's it's uh you know the debate around specialists experts generalists and to your point, the doctor not winging it. I, I find one of the most helpful frameworks I found is by Dave Snowden, and it's called the Kinevan framework. It's not Kinevan from the Welsh, but it's C Y N E F I N, I think. So, yeah, okay. Kinevan framework. And he makes the distinction between complicated and complex. And basically, complicated is that there are known unknowns, there's a range of right answers. Um, cause and effect um, can be understood ex ante. And that's how you send a, a probe to Mars. It's how you fix a plane. It's to your point, the medical science doctors and their experts are needed and that's essential. And so it's not a dismissive of that. That's key for complicated. In complex, they are unknown unknowns. It's emergent. You only establish causality ex post. They're multi-directional drivers. And you, you know, it's how the Amazon River or the Amazon is built. If you build a hotel there, how will the rest of the Amazon change? That's not, that's more, it's in flux. It's constantly changing, it's dynamic. And it's for those unknown unknowns, complex environments where indeed you need Shoshin and beginner's mind. And a lot of our world, we like to think it's all complicated and rational and plug and play. But a lot of our, of our world and our biggest challenges are not. We've seen it with, with climate. A lot of it is we understand scientifically what's driving the climate issues. And that I'm, you know, I'm not a denialist. That is science that is dictating the issues we have. But science is not yet able to say, if you do this, this is how it will happen, how quickly, exactly where. Is there still a lot of discovery around some questions, um, some of the world's challenges today? as to exactly what the best approach is. That's what's, that's the movie Don't Look Up is based on that, is that some of these big challenges don't have a straightforward answer um, today. And so in that case, you need beginner's mind because beginner's mind is what will allow you to not assume that something is impossible, to challenge the assumptions. Why can't we cure cancer? Why can't we um, produce something that doesn't emit um, carbon? Yeah. And and basically, Shoshin is what allows you. It's it's actually for the anecdote why the Wright brothers, who were not as competent in terms of technical training um, as a competitor, I think it was Samuel Langley who had a big award or whatever in the early 1900s, and it was the Wright brothers who were the first to develop it because they used Shoshin and beginner's mind. And so, you want to understand the limitations of of what you know, the assumptions you're making. You want to understand that the futures are open, that maybe you can achieve the impossible. Um, You want to understand the impact of non-linearity in the world, that if you make assumptions and or have fixed assumptions and you don't have the beginner's mind, the beginner's mind allows you also to anticipate unanticipated events for the good and for the bad. Maybe, you know, the falsity of the imagination is why we're creating the wrong things or producing in the wrong way, et cetera. So long story short, this idea of Shoshin and beginner's mind is really linked to kind of first principles, to the assumptions you make about the world and to being able to operate in an emergent way in those zones and environments where they all straightforward predetermined answers.